to say good evening to you, welcoming you to Ray of Hope Ministries. Hopefully that your week is going good. It's always a privilege to come and share the, the gospel with you across these airways. And again, we just want to thank God for the Unity Broadcasting Station here in Fulton. I want to say we appreciate uh, Will Smith as well. Will, thank you for helping us. If you, uh, you're watching today and, and you need prayer, we want to pray with you that God would touch you and minister to you on behalf of the situation that you're facing. We're living in very difficult times, and I know more than ever we need prayer. And uh, we believe in prayer here at Unity. We believe that, that God can minister to your need. And uh, we would like to just start off with a word of prayer today. I want to pray for a dear friend, Brother Robert McGee. Brother Robert lost his sister. She passed away on Monday. And uh, Brother Robert, uh, it was his only sister. And he really needs our prayers for comfort. I want to lift him up in, uh, during this time. And also those that are struggling with all these sicknesses, with all this COVID-19, there's a lot of people that really need a touch from the Lord and a lot of families that, that have lost loved ones during this time with this awful uh, disease. And I know that God can bring comfort to them. And uh, we're praying uh, for, for as well, Sister Stephanie Adams. Her grandfather passed away and they, they buried him uh, this week as well. And I want to pray that God would comfort all of these and uh, just want to lift them up today. Father, we love you and we thank you, God, for the awesome privilege it is to come and, and petition the throne of grace. We pray today, God, that you would just be with these families that's lost these loved ones, bring comfort to them. And Lord, I believe, Father, that you're able to, to heal, God, those that are sick, I believe that you're able to restore those that need restoration in their lives and their families. And Lord, today we ask you to bless this program and use this time that we have to speak into the hearts of those that are watching today. And Lord, we'll give you thanks and praise for all these things that we've asked in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. I want to look at uh, 2 Kings chapter 2. I want to begin reading in verse number 19, and uh, we'll, we'll finish up with verse 22 and uh, just share some things with you today about becoming a vessel, a vessel for God. And uh, truly, God needs vessels that will be uh, used of Him in this time in which we live. Let's begin reading. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant. As my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground is barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of waters, and he cast salt in there, and he saith, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall be not from hence any more death or barren. So the waters were healed unto this city according to the saying of Elisha which he spake. There is a difference today between a people moved by discontent, dislike, differences of opinion, and those who are moved by a constraint of a divine vision. That is by the in raw reaction of God 
that is registered upon the heart of man. You see, the inward longing found expression, uh, the inward longing, the expression of the heart, when it's, when it's relayed from the heart of God, there's going to be a, a profound effect upon that. No doubt we need people that would have a heart that not would be just discontent or dissatisfied, maybe uh, disliking uh, uh, differences of opinion. All of these things are natural in our society. We're going to have differences and we're going to uh, we're going to have things that, that we're not content with. And there's going to be things that we dislike between each other. And there is a, there, there is a major uh, a problem that I see uh, in America today where, where people can, can no longer have a difference in a, of opinion and get along. It, it's sad. What we need in our society is a divine vision from God that will register upon the heart of man. That's what we need. Psalms 137, verse number one says this, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept. When we remembered Zion, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. Verse four, it says, how long shall we sing the Lord's song in the strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her skill. Let my tongue cleave into the roof of my mouth. If I remember not thee, if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chiefest joy. The implications of the hearts of these people as we read in, in Psalms 137 was this, their hearts yearned. Their, their hearts yearn to be in a place where they had joy and, and peace and happiness and contentment. No doubt, that's the ultimate thing in the heart of God. God desires His people to be joyful and happy and content. We're living in a time where uh, we, we're, we're seeing in our society right here in the United States of America where the land is being kind of decimated. It seems like that everything that we're seeing in our society is, is, is losing hope. It seems like the reality of, of man today is, is, is seemingly on the negative side. Negative, all negative. But in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all of these crises, in the midst of all of these situations, there's hope. I, 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 I'm reminded about the story of this place that, that Elisha was at and, and the people had came to him and said, look, the city is good, it's pleasant, everything is good, but the water is bitter. It's poison. We can't drink it. The land is filled with barrenness and uh, we can't grow crops and everything is, is just decimated. And, and Elijah said, uh, Elisha said, bring me a, a, a new cruise. Bring me a, a vessel. And he said, put salt in it. You know, I thought this was interesting that Elisha would choose a new cruise. A cruise that had never been used a vessel that had never been used before you know and i want to just stop right there and just say this god is looking for some people that that will step up to the plate in our society that maybe has never been on the forefront never had a platform to speak on and god is ready to raise up some new cruises some new vessels god needs some people that that uh, maybe has uh, not been out there before. And what we've tried in the past has failed and it's not worked. Maybe we need to try something different, something new. My prayer today is that God would raise up some fresh blood 
God would raise up some people in our society, maybe that nobody else has ever heard of. Maybe God has kept some people in the secret place and God's going to bring them out to make a difference in our world. Truly, this is what we need. We need a new cruise. We need a new voice. We need something that, that will become relevant instead of irrelevant. We've got a lot of voices in, in, in America that are irrelevant anymore. People don't listen to them anymore because they're, they're insane. Let me just say that. Their insanity has caused them to close the ears of people. There's some people that when they come on the news, I don't listen to anymore. I, you can think something of me or whatever. It's okay. It's just I know what their rhetoric is. I know what they're going to say because they've said it a million times. And it's going to be the same, same, same. What we need is a new voice. What we need is a new cruise. We need someone that that will hear what uh, is being said in our, our, our world, in our society, and have answers for it. You see, I believe with all of my heart that the person of Jesus Christ, His cross, His death, His burial, His resurrection, the church... The coming of Christ, the city of God. You see, I believe that these places are, are very important. And I believe that these things are very important in our society. You see, the person of Jesus Christ was manifest in the flesh. And in, in that, it is the sum of all full revelation. And it's an undisputed fact. It takes the cross to give full meaning, to, to fulfill and reveal the full value of that manifestation. It demands that the church be, or put it on display. Put what on display? The cross and what Jesus did. And that needs to be seen in our society. We need leaders that will preach Jesus. We need leaders that will exemplify the cross, not as some emblem of, of, uh, of beauty, but an emblem of death, that Jesus went to the cross over 2,000 years ago and gave his life as a ransom for mankind. And people need to know that Jesus, when he did that, gave us hope. And when the church put this, puts this on display and manifests this, people will begin to turn back to the church and find hope again. I really believe that we as the church need to get back to the cross. I believe that the cross needs to be seen in our society. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, he said, I will draw all men unto me. I believe that. I believe that, that Calvary is the central thing. I believe that Calvary has to be the central place, not only in the Christian's life, not only in the church, but I believe that the cross needs to be a central thing in society. You see, I believe that because of these things, uh, things that we have put God on the back burner. We have taken the cross out of its rightful place, the central place in our lives. I believe that we are seeing a, a society crumble all around us. And I believe that God wants to, to let the cross be seen again. And I believe that that's the church's responsibility. You see, we've been redeemed. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You see, the worship of the beast has been going on since Lucifer secured a following. A reverence from angels in a high state 
of heaven. When Lucifer fell from heaven and it was found in his heart that, that he had pride and he wanted to be uh, exalted above the Almighty, his intent was drawing heaven's worship away from God himself. You see, this is the point that Satan has, has worked to do. He, he, has, he has worked to take the cross out of the central place in society. He has worked to take the cross out of the central place in the church. He has worked to take the cross out of the central place in our homes. And he has done a, a good job of it. But I believe with all of my heart that if we're going to see a, a nation healed, we're going to see a society come back from, from ruins. And believe me, our society at this moment is heading down a path of destruction and ruin. And I believe that the only hope and the only answer is the, is the cross of Jesus Christ. And I don't know how, and I don't know when, and I don't know where, but I do believe that God is going to raise up a generation that will believe the cross, that will preach the cross, that will show the cross, that will manifest what Jesus did. You see, from the fall, Satan set up a, a spiritual system of worship, which is perceivable behind the whole record of history. Whenever and, and wherever the rights of God were recognized by sacrifice, he always tried to interfere in that worship. The moment that Abel recognized the rights of God and created his altar, there came this evil thing against his testimony. You see, that murder came to withstand and to destroy the testimony using Cain as his instrument. Cain also set up an altar and made a pretense in his darkened understanding to worship God. But he never got through. Now Satan using that ground churned up the elements of pride and jealousy and Cain because of this killed his brother. You see, the devil has a scheme and it's laid deep. He knows what he's doing. And he is doing it well in our society. And I'm telling you, the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ is the answer to these problems. You see, through the eternal, eternal spirit, Jesus gave the solution at Calvary. At Calvary, there was more than that old man being dealt with. It was the throne of God that Christ was standing for at Calvary. You see, it was the ultimate and universal glory of God that he was fighting for at Calvary. He confronted all of, of this that was set against the throne of God. He met it victoriously and secured those eternal universal rights of God in his own person forever. You see, God is going without question to be universally worshipped. Understand this. And the glory of God is going to fill this universe. Jesus Christ is in the presence of God, victorious over everything that was against the throne of God. You see, this is something that's very important. He said, Lo, I am come to do thy will. In Hebrews 10 and 7, O God. When we speak of knowing and doing the will of God, may God help us to grasp the, the significance of that all. You see, the will, of, the will of God means nothing more than that God shall be universally glorified. 
Did you hear that? That he will be universally glorified and that he shall be the central object of worship in the universe, not Satan. You see, those who enter fully into the meaning of the cross, which is the will of God, will, encant will encounter a supreme assault against them of Satan. Do you wonder why Satan hates the cross? You ask yourself the question. Do you wonder why he and by any means will have the cross set aside? Do you not understand why the cross has, has all been but removed from today's society and even preaching? Can we not see that it is inevitable that anyone who enters into the meaning of the cross spiritually will come up, will come up against the whole system of antagonism of Satan. When we see Abel in, in the very earliest and simplest forms of the cross, when we enter into a relationship with the blood, that sacrifice, and that altar, he was immediately attacked by Satan. The Holy Spirit through John says this of Cain, that he was a wicked person, that he was the wicked one. 1 John 3 and 12. So it was with Abraham and with Joseph, Moses, and also in the case of Esther. The story of Daniel is the same thing. Two gods, the God set up by Nebuchadnezzar and the true and living God. The question was, which one is going to be worshipped? Daniel never hesitated. His decision was clear. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 4, 24 and 15. It is Jehovah and Jehovah alone. The decision brought Daniel face to face with the power behind this world system that he was called upon to pay a price. And we know the story. How Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't bow down, but they worshiped and they prayed to the true and living God. And because of that, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was thrown into fire. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. It's no different in our society today. It's no different. What we need to understand is, is we need a new cruise. We need a message, a message of the cross that will be preached. That God will be universally glorified and worshipped. You see, the God of this world is coming down with great wrath at this moment. Satan himself, the God of this world, is coming down with great wrath. We know that Satan said to Jesus in Matthew 4, 9, if you would just fall down and worship me. Jesus said, don't tempt the Lord thy God. You see, I'm amazed at the gall of Satan. I'm amazed at what is happening today and people's eyes are not open to see it. It's amazing to see all of these things that are happening and it seems like society is just letting it go by and just letting it happen. Please hear me today when I say this. We need God to move in America. We need God to move in our communities. You see, the cross re registers the removal of by destruction of all that serve Satan and self. Self is the stronger term of flesh. You see, some people don't know what you mean when you talk about the flesh. Flesh is, the, is a term we use for self. Self is a very subtle thing. 
It, in, it includes self-interest, self-glory, self-preservation, self-realization, self-advance. And all of these uh, are considered influences, prestige, and so on. You see the phrase of self are many. In every one of them, I said the phrases of self are many, and every one of them are used by Satan. You see, but the cross removes all of that. In closing today, my prayer is this, that the cross will be seen. My prayer today is that, that you would hear what God is saying to our society. And God is speaking in this hour more, I believe, right now to his people and telling them to prepare themselves for what's coming. So I want to pray today in closing. I want to thank you for watching. I thank you for being a part of Ray of Hope. There is hope. And God is raising up a generation. Father, as we come to the close of this, this message, I pray, God, that you would touch the hearts of your people. Lord, I pray that the cross of Calvary would be seen. It would be recognized. I pray that your Holy Spirit, Father, God would touch and minister to those that need God a touch from you. And God, what a privilege it has been to share your word today. Thank you for this opportunity. Now, Lord, I pray that you would be with us and, and keep us the rest of this week. Keep your hands upon us. Lord, those that are in the hospital tonight, maybe watching those in the nursing home, I pray for them that you'd bring courage into their heart. Lord, if there be one that needs forgiveness of sins, I ask you, God, Lord, to pardon their sins. Lord, maybe they would pray a prayer with me and say, Lord, please forgive me. Come into my heart. I confess you as the Lord of my life. I confess my faults. And I believe, Father, that, that you are forgiving God. And Father, we'll be careful to give you thanks and praise for this. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I pray that, that this, this message has been a blessing. And if we've prayed this prayer with you, and you need help, and you need discipling, let us know. We'll work with you. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Have a great evening.